name's Joe Mancuso, the founder of www.ceoclubs.org. And in about a five minute video, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about our clubs and what we do and why we do it. Hopefully, a mission statement, and I uh, hope sometime to have a chance to meet you. I'm a very lucky guy in my lifetime. I've probably met and been friends with more CEOs than anyone you know. I began in 1977. I was on the faculty of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, WPI. In Worcester, Massachusetts, I was chairman of the management department. And I had the idea to put together a group of CEOs around the country who had a mission of helping each other and uh, working together. The um, club started really uh, just as I left that school. And I, I looked around and I thought to myself, boy, I've had a lot of education, you know, uh, graduate school, doctorate, wrote 26 books, sold several million copies, then I was a teacher. And I got familiar with the educational process. And I said, this is a very difficult way to learn, you know, sit in a classroom. And someone on the front of the blackboard writing notes, you take notes, you give an exam, you pass the exam. And I looked at my own life and I thought, gee, I learned better and more efficiently and longer by experiences. And my mission to help CEOs grow their business, which is the mission of our club, I thought, gee, there'd be a nicer way to do that. And I also thought to myself, it's kind of strange, you know, the A students that I knew hung around the university and uh, taught and wrote books, whereas the B students, which represents the bulk of the students, uh, worked uh, most of their lives for the C students. And I just thought somehow we ought to look at a different format for education. And this is where the CEO club started. And we do it in uh, several ways. I, you know, my mission in the beginning was very lofty. It's a, we're in the uh, organization of CEOs dedicated to improving the profitability and quality of our enterprise through shared experience and personal growth. And while that catches the met mission of our club, the later mission was we're in the business of making money, having fun, all while we're learning. Is a really closer to the spirit of uh, our, our clubs. And we do those things in uh, three or four different ways, and I hope you have a chance in some way to meet some of our members, many of who have been members, uh, you know, 30, 35 years like I have. We all say it's okay to be independent, but there's no reason to be alone. And one of the major activities we uh, sponsor are meetings. And across the United States, we probably have several thousand members. Average member of our club is not a big company, not a small company, about 50, 75 employees. Although uh, we do have some big companies, America Online started with us when they were very small. And we do have some onesie twosies, but a, a bell-shaped curve puts us average member of about 60 employees. And uh, most of our members uh, own the company, not all, but most are the uh, founder CEO types. We do have professional managers, and we say that a professional manager is skilled at protecting a resource, whereas an entrepreneurial manager is skilled at creating a resource. And both uh, are needed in our economic system, and the entrepreneurial manager needs a flow, a constant flow, of information to keep him or her creative. And that's where our clubs do an outstanding job. We provide uh, vehicles, opportunities, platforms, group meetings, or you're going to come away with a new idea, and oftentimes one good idea is worth, you know, several years of bad ideas. The first category then is we run meetings, and we'll do them at um, uh, all sorts of places. But uh, typically in New York, we do them at the Harvard Club in Boston, at the Harvard Club in Dallas, currently using the Cooper Clinic, and in Baltimore, uh, Harbor Hotel. And in Miami, we use the Doral Hotel. So we try to do them in convenient places where you can park and come and go. And our mission is to get you to come to the office. Sometime we'll get a controversial speaker. 
that we don't necessarily agree with the view. Sometime we'll get a famous speaker that we just think is terrific and fun, but you don't learn anything. And sometimes we'll get a narrow-minded speaker who only wants to talk about a narrow sliver of direct mail or negotiating or something. And if you study our website, ceoclubs.org, you'll see there's about 300 terrific one-hour talks, free, and you'll see the name of the speaker, probably the date and the topic. And it's kind of a little mini MBA if you spend 300 hours listening to those talks as you're driving. You're going to pick up a lot of information because those CEOs who gave messages to us all had a, a, a mission, and uh, some of them are just terrific. And uh, many of them people have listened to thousands and thousands of times. Uh, second category of the way we try to help our, our members, we try to put them together in small groups, dozen typically. And now we call that a presidential advisory council, a pack, and we think of it as a wolf pack. And the members meet uh, eight times a year at each other's companies, and they sign confidentiality agreements, and they share financial information. And it's a terrific uh, vehicle for growing a board of advisors for your business. Uh, you know, uh, they're not selling you ongoing consulting services, and they're not trying to force you into any activity. But if 10 CEOs say sell the company, you might want to think about listening to 10. Now, when you get five and five, which often happens, or seven and five, you've got to really weigh issues. But it's useful to sound out uh, difficult decisions with peers, and not always with the you know advisors that you pay money for. It gives you a little flavor for our club. Now, the third category where we really have grown in the last ten years is we are putting our members in this country together with members of the same size, same mission, same type, around the world. And the CEO clubs, I'm very happy to tell you, really has more members today outside the United States, where we started and I live here in New York on Wall Street. Um, uh, in my loft, I work and live in the same loft uh, as I have for all those 35 years since we started in 1977. And we have members now of uh, the strongest country by a factor of 10 is China. 12 cities in China we have active members. I've been to China probably 25 times the last 12 years, and I've taken 850 CEOs on different trips. The same in Greece, same in India, same in Dubai. And uh, right now, in uh, one month, I'm leaving for my first real visit to South Africa. Johannesburg, and we're going to do a safari because not only do we work hard, we want to have some fun too. And the best way to learn is mixing fun and work. And uh, then after I go to uh, South Africa, I'm going up to Romania and Serbia, where I've never been. And our Greece chapter is going to be sponsoring uh, new, new chapters in those countries. So what you'll find in those trips is wonderful opportunities to meet new friends, and, and, you know, you can do a direct mail campaign, you can hire a telemarketer, you can get a consultant, and you can try to advertise and get your business to expand. What we have as a mission in the CEO Club is to expand your business because, really, the easiest and cleanest way to expand is when you make contact with someone. You're both sitting in an African safari jeep. You're both sitting in China, and he's a customer and becomes a friend, and so-and-so is a supplier. That's the real long-term value of the CEO Club. So I've given you a quick picture. I'm sure you got a lot of questions. Look around the website, you'll see. But I end by saying, yes, sir, I'm probably the luckiest guy you ever will be because in my lifetime I've spent it always dealing, working, trusting, being friends with CEOs, and they're just a lot of terrific talent uh, in that category. Hope to see you at a meeting. All the best.